What's up guys, Cliff here from The Sunday Drive and in today's video we are going to continue the battle against rust and corrosion on my 2014 Silverado. Now you guys have probably already seen the video where I stripped down the back half of my frame, we pulled the bed and I was able to access the frame that was under the bed and we coated that with POR um, and some other products and you guys can check that video out if you haven't done so already. But any solution is not a permanent solution when it comes to rust and corrosion, at least not usually, unless you can get uh, your vehicle completely removed from the frame and you can go and take it and get it dipped uh, properly, um, you're always gonna be fighting a battle. And most of us cannot afford to remove the whole body from a frame. So what we're gonna be doing should be helpful for you guys. So. Um, regardless of whether you've previously coated your frame like we did in that video, or if your frame is from the factory with the rubberized coating, this will still be helpful. Um, but before we get started, I wanna give a little shout out to Nelson. He actually drove down um, and just uh, cold called and said, hey, could you do what uh, you did to your truck to my truck? Um, and while we would have loved to help him out, um, unfortunately, we're not set up for a high capacity volume operation. My truck frame is the only truck frame I've actually ever done. We're in the process of doing peach truck frame, um, but we're probably gonna have that here for a month. We have to do some welding and stuff. And when I first did my truck, I probably spent 50 hours on it and just we're not set up in a way that could be profitable or have the space for realistically. So unfortunately you will have to look elsewhere if you wanna have this done on your vehicle. Um, but thank you Nelson <laughs> for trusting us enough with your truck. Um, and I do hope that you find a, a shop to do that for you. Now, what we're gonna be coating all of the metal components under the truck with is fluid film. This is a lanolin uh, a film fluid, um, and this is supposed to really be uh, kind of sticky and stick to the metal, so you hopefully don't have it dripping everywhere. It will make under the truck a little bit um, messier to work on, unfortunately. However, um, I would rather have a little bit of fluid that I need to wipe off before I work on a component than having that component be rusted so beyond repair where it needs to be replaced like the issues we're actually having on Peach Truck, which you'll see in some following videos. We have to cut out some cross braces and do welding. It's gonna be a, a fun video series on that. So this is gonna be going on the frame and then inside the door panels of the truck, because you'll see a lot of rocker panels and door panels that rust out, um, is gonna be Kent Automotive inner panel rust proofing. Now this is something you have to purchase from a dealer. Um, we did get set up with them as a dealer. So um, if you are interested in this product, you could go through us. However, it, uh, it might be easier and simpler for you guys to find a distributor locally um, since we don't really sell like a lot of products directly. Um, but if you're having a hard time finding it, reach out to us and we'll see if you, we can help you out with it. Um, but this is actually uh, GM recommended, uh, penetrates into seams and hems, protects hidden areas and inner panels, uh, can be spot or MIG welded through, which is kind of cool, and it doesn't produce any corrosive uh, byproducts. Um, we have this going in all the door panels as well as the um, rocker panels, and it comes with a extension wand. This is similar to the Eastwood extension wand that we used painting inside the, um, the tube rails at the back of the truck in the frame coating video. Now, a lot of you guys did comment and say POR isn't the best product to use on a bare frame. Um, and that's true, um, but if you do the proper prep work, it can still really work well. And that's why we use that metal prep uh, in the video. And you also wanna kind of rough it up with some sandpaper and stuff like that. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had roughed it up a little bit more, but it seems to be working well. Uh, a lot of people that say you go to the epoxy route and you can do that, but epoxy really only works if the metal is absolutely 100% clean, um, whereas POR, paint over rust, is intended to paint over rust. So if there's some rust there that you really can't get out, it's gonna probably be the best solution for you as long as you prep. Prep is everything. So we're gonna be going through a lot more of the prep work. Um, I kind of didn't go into enough detail probably in our video. So with Pete's frame video, we're gonna be going into more detail on that. So um, definitely be, uh, sticking around for those videos as well. All right, so let's just take a little walk through the truck. We'll start at the front where we haven't done any uh, prep or uh, coating um, and go to the back where we did do all that work. The, the front cross brace, this one's held up pretty well. Usually there's a splash out here. Um, I just removed that before we started filming, so that does help protect us. But um, this front bar is definitely starting to show some signs of rust. Um, now one thing with the lanolin fluid, you are spraying that on, you wanna try to keep it off of your wires. 
Um, there are a lot of wiring harnesses run under newer trucks like mine. So you don't want to just spray haphazard underneath the vehicle. Really try to get it on the metal and keep it off of any plastics as much as possible. So as we move back, some of these cross spaces are still holding up pretty well. And honestly, if you get under your truck before you have a lot of corrosion, um, you can just do oil sprays, either uh, regular oil, used oil, a lot of guys will do that, not as environmentally friendly, or the, the lanolin spray, which is, is a more environmentally friendly product. Um, as long as you keep it lubricated over the winter where salt and dirt can't stick to the frame, it won't ever corrode. So um, if you have a truck that's only a few years old, just start spraying it and it should last. Um, a lot of guys, especially with the Kent Automotive, said they have sprayed their trucks for years and had no issues. We're starting to have a lot of the flaking issues that I had towards the back of the truck. Obviously this area gets beat up a lot by road debris as you're driving, getting kicked up, and this is just all flaking off. So a lot of exposed metal under here. Um, I am going to be coming back at some point and uh, coating at least a portion of the front. I, I don't know how much work I want to get involved with with actually lifting the cab. I'd like to, but eh, one day maybe, but not anytime in the near future. Um, so for now, I'm just going to be spraying it down with oil to keep it from corroding any further. And then probably next summer, uh, I'll be coming back and touching up some areas like this. And then as we move to the back to the areas that we did work on, uh, so you can see probably easiest over here. This is about where we stop, somewhere in this area right here. So it seems like this part's holding up really well, the POR and the rubberized undercoating uh, seems to be protecting it. I don't see any rust poking through anywhere. Um, there's a couple spots, so let's see, right here might have a, no, that's still soft and supple, but it is flaking off a little there. So I'm gonna try to pick up any of those loose pieces because you don't want anything loose because then water is gonna get behind them. But for the most part, I don't really see anything loose. This is still, it's, it's hardened up definitely over time. And then back here, we pulled down the spare tire. Up in here, there's starting to be a little bit of corrosion again, up in that area, but this was pretty bad. So there's a little bit, but it isn't that bad. And this has been, I think, three years since I did this coating. So this is solid. I don't, nope, no corrosion in there that I can feel. Everything seems pretty good. Um, so, it has been holding up pretty well. Now, since I did this coating, I've probably put about 40,000 miles on the truck. Um, it's seen, I think, two winners. Um, it was sitting for a while, so even though it was three years, it wasn't getting the amount of mileage I normally put on the truck, um, but it does have about 40,000 miles on it. So it's held up pretty well, um, as far as I can tell. Nothing's ever perfect. Now, inside these frame rails, the, on one side, the paint is starting to flake out. And the reason for that is because I wasn't able to prep properly inside these frame rails. I could only clean them so much. They still had a lot of the rubberized undercoating in there. Um, so unfortunately, some of the POR is lifting off on the ends just because, again, prep. Prep is everything. You can't prep properly in the frame rails. Um, I figured it was better to add something in there rather than nothing, which where we did the Eastwood internal frame coating all the way through. But now adding that lanolin spray all the way down the uh, tubes, the tubes, uh, cross members here, that should definitely help um, keep them from getting uh, corroded, even if the POR and other products do lift off of it because we couldn't prep it properly. I did grab one of the, the containers and was just reading through some of the um, safety notes, and it says, care should be taken around non-oil resistant rubber goods, may cause swelling, as we mentioned. Fluid fill may soften some vehicle undercoatings. This includes undercoating type uh, paints, check with dealer manufacturer for compatibility. So uh, whenever you're spraying this on, just be careful what you are getting it on. Only get it on what you want it to. Um, it can go right on bare metal. It will help it uh, to cop corroding, but this isn't a one-time application. This is something you should do every winter. And if you live in an area that has longer winters, um, it might not hurt to do it a couple times, maybe once in the beginning and once midway through just to really protect your, your vehicle from the salt. Now, the one thing that I regret not doing is I didn't drop the fuel tank. So definitely in the near future, we're gonna be pulling the bed off, really looking the frame over good to give you guys a nice update on that. Um, but we are gonna drop that fuel tank to really uh, coat that tube frame. There's two tube frames that run above it. Um, the very front one, although on my truck, it looks more like a flat frame as opposed to a tube frame but that middle one right there is, is the biggest culprit. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't do that. So over here on Pete's truck, we are in the process of 
getting this ready for the winter. This frame has never been touched. We just pulled the bed off, uh, did a lot of uh, grinding and sanding. So the, the frame is actually in, in very good shape considering uh, this is an 04 that's just never been touched, but the truck was taken pretty good care of. However, where that fuel tank sits is right here. And as you can see, because the fuel tank hugs this cross member, just oil and saw in the wintertime are sitting right in this area and it's completely rusted this all the way through. You can stick my hand all the way through here, hand in up here, it's just the whole bottom of this cross member is gone. So we have new ones. We're gonna be cutting these out, welding these in. Um, it's gonna be a, a pretty cool video series when it gets all done, but this is definitely turning into a bigger project than we anticipated. And same issue with the front cross member here. It looks like mine's designed a little bit differently, so I might have an issue with the front one. Um, but if I don't touch this back one and just let it go, even if the rest of the frame is great, these are gonna get rusted out. So probably next summer, I'll be dropping that fuel tank. Even if you're coating it with this stuff, it's gonna be really hard to get a coating down in that area with the bed on. So I would definitely recommend pulling the bed, dropping the tank, um, maybe every four or five years. I don't think you need to necessarily do it every year because this is a lot of work, but you probably are gonna wanna get in there regularly, make sure it's not rusting away on you. So we're gonna break this video down into two parts. The first part is gonna be the fluid film, and the second part is gonna be the Kent Automotive inner panel rust proofing. So lay down a tarp under your vehicle. This stuff is gonna be hard to get off. The good thing is you want it to be hard to get off. Once it's on there, you want it to stay on to continue protecting the metal uh, no matter the conditions, but it's gonna get all over you. If you have a way to get this up on a lift, 100% recommend doing that. It's gonna make your life a lot easier, but uh, cover up, you're probably gonna need a degreaser or something of that sort to get this off. Um, wear face protection, all the works. We're just gonna shoot some B-roll um, of spraying everything down. If there's any lessons learned as I'm doing this, I'll make sure to point those out. Otherwise, enjoy the B-roll clip, and then in the next video, tune back in, and we'll be spraying the door panels as well as the rocker panels on this truck with the Kent Automotive Solution. And hopefully, we can keep this truck lasting for many years to come. All right, so I've just started spraying the truck. I basically have from this cross member, cross member back done. Um, I'm probably putting it on way thicker than I need to. It's my first time using this stuff. And if it's running like that, you're probably putting too much on, but this is one thing more definitely does not hurt. One interesting thing they say, if you get this on your clothing, don't put it in your washing machine, um, dry clean it. So I'm guessing this could gunk up your washing machine. So just keep that in mind. I'm wearing some old clothes, so I don't care if these get dirty, some old shoes, head covered, have a mask, um, always wear your proper protection, breathing, all that kind of stuff. The good thing is this, Stuff, uh, compared to most things on the market, is definitely a lot less toxic. Um, but always still wear your proper protection. So we're just gonna keep working from the back forward. They sp say to spray four to six inches. Um, I believe it's four to six inches. Let's see, oh, six to eight inches uh, from the frame. I'm obviously getting a little closer because I'm trying to keep it off the wires. Um, one thing you could do is go and proactively um, or preventatively wrap all of your wires with electrical tape to keep this from getting on there. And then when you're done, pull all that tape off. I'm just trying to be careful and not getting in on any of the rubber. And I have a rag, I'm going and wiping it right away if it does get on there so it doesn't have time to really absorb. I can already tell at some point, I'm definitely gonna wanna take the bed off, which I plan to do anyway, and really spray the top of the frame rails down a little bit better because it's kind of hard to see up above and obviously gonna drop that fuel tank. But it's pretty straightforward. You kind of point and shoot and we're gonna see how it goes. I also have wand extensions that I bought with these too. Um, so getting inside some of these cross members, uh, and some of the hard to reap places, I'll be able to do that with those spraying wands, which will attach. Um, but it's going well so far. So I got six bottles. We'll see if it's enough, depending on how carried away I get. <laughs> it's definitely going a little bit excess. <laughs> but some of these places are hard to have the can six to eight inches away. You may want to be careful getting this on body mounts or any of those rubber components too, like I said, so. All right guys, so that's the truck all done, at least almost as far as the fluid film is concerned. I didn't uh, have time tonight to do inside the doors and the rocker panels. I'm gonna do that another day. Um, I actually ran out of fluid film, so I used six cans. I definitely went heavier than I needed to, um, but when you're trying to stay away from all the wires and everything, um, you kind of have to spray really close. 
so you don't get the same amount of coverage as you would otherwise. Um, one thing you probably could do is like take a paintbrush and like spread it around a little bit better, but I'm okay with it being heavier. Uh, extra protection is not gonna hurt anything as long as you don't have it on your rubber, plastic, wires, things like that. So I probably need about two more cans to finish up. I also sprayed inside like the inside of the bed near the wheel wells. So hopefully that you don't eventually have rust poking through on the inside there. Now, one thing you might wanna keep in mind when you do put your spare tire back on, you don't want that sitting in a lot of oil. So what I did is I just took a towel and wipe down the contact points where the tire is gonna sit up there. It, it's kind of a bummer because you do want that protected. However, if you're caught on the side of the road and you put your spare tire on, you don't want that blowing out because the rubber got compromised because of the oil. So, a bit of a trade off there. I, probably the best thing to do would, if it was rusting, is just to paint that, put a thin coat of oil, then wipe it down so there's not a lot to soak into the tire. Um, but just keep that in mind when you put your spare up. So, in a couple of days, I'm gonna finish this up when I get some more cans in, and we will have a second video showing how to do inside the doors, as well as the rocker panels with the uh, Kent Automotive coating. Um, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. Talk to you guys later.